stopping to check out my video. I hope you've all had a lovely week and had lots of sewing time for yourselves. My name is Katrina and this is my channel Create Something Pretty if you haven't met before and there were lots of new subscribers last week so thank you so much for stopping and hitting that button. I really appreciate you being here and everyone who's left comments on my last video, um, I love seeing your names down below. Thank you so much for taking the time to have a little chat with me so I really appreciate that. So today's video is my June, July makes. Uh, I hope you'll enjoy what I have to show you today. I made seven items in the last two months. Unfortunately, I can't show you one of them because it was a uh, patent test and it hasn't been released just yet. So it's a bit unfortunate, but I'm sure it won't be long now. So um, I'm going to show you the patterns that I use to make these items and then I'll show you the items and um, hopefully you enjoy what I have. So the first item, I'm actually wearing it. This is a Tilly and the Buttons Agnes T. Um, I made this, um, it was either very late in May or June, so I included it anyway. I um, This was actually the second one that I've made. Um, and I made a few adjustments to the pattern. So I'll show you the pattern first. So this is the Agnes T by Tilly, Tilly and the Buttons. It has that lovely scoop neck. It has a couple of sleeve options as well. Um, it has, I'll show you some more line drawings. So it has this different length sleeves. It has one with ruching at the shoulders and then it has the scoop neck or the, um, it's like a ruching at the neck to create like a sweetheart neckline. And it is quite a fitted bodice. However, it is um, a very size inclusive pattern. So if you wanted to grade out, but not to show bits of you that you don't like, you prefer people not to see, you can always grade out to try and hide that, which is what I've actually done. It's quite a fitted silhouette. So what I did, I graded out quite a few sizes at my waist. And then um, I actually graded out a bit for my hips as well, which I don't think I needed to do. So, um, I it actually, this shirt, I feel like it sits out a bit, and I, so I probably should have graded back in. So if I was to make it again, I would do that. But I've made it, I, <laughs> I've made this scoop neck, and I've just gone with the plain sleeves up to my elbow. And I find this is a really practical style for myself. I love the scoop neck, and I think that's what draw, drew me to this pattern in the first place. Um, my fabric is, I think it's a cotton jersey. It's been in my stash for years. Um, I'm not 100%. It's not as stretchy as the last one I made. The last one was an, uh, an elastane, um, yeah, a spandex elastane. So it was like really, really stretchy. So, and I made adjustments to this one according to the last one I made, but I've used a different fabric. So um, that was a bit of a learning curve. So this is a knit pattern if I hadn't mentioned that already. Um, I am not as good with knits as I am with a woven, so I feel like this is something I'm still working out. I, I have done a few, but I still have a lot to learn. So um, when I made my original Agnes, I was getting um, like a gaping at the back of my neck and I had looked up a tutorial on how to fix that. Um, I went to Lifting Pins and Needles, Karina at Lifting Pins and Needles, I followed her tutorial on how to fix it. And her advice was to size down the upper body and um, do a narrow shoulder adjustment. And so that is what I did. Um, I, however, don't think I need to do a narrow shoulder adjustment because um, being a different fabric and it's a little bit more stable, I feel like it pulls on the shoulder here. So I probably could have just sized size down and <laughs> it would have been fine. So if I do that again using a fabric like this, and I wouldn't mind making this again, um, I would probably just just um, size down and great just grade out at the hips. So, so that was my first pattern that I made. This is the Agnes T by Tilly and the Buttons. So my daughter is actually home at the moment. She's a little unwell, so I'm just keeping an ear out for her if you can hear any background noise. So this next item that I made, my the second item of my June July was the Cebu top by Itch to Stitch and I think this is a really good pattern. It has the two neck options, it has two sleeve lengths, 
Um, and it's just a really nice little shirt. It has, um, what do they call it? Uh, I actually wrote down the name of the sleeve so I can tell you. The sleeve is called, it's a bat wing top. Um, so this sleeve and the body is all one piece and it just is finished with a cuff. So it's really easy to make. It's uh, got a band on the bottom, a band at the neck and the sleeves are finished with a little the cuff here. Uh, so it's really, really easy to make, nice and quick. There is an option as well to put in lace or a different um, fabric at the shoulders. But I was actually intending to do this one with the cow, but um, I didn't get enough fabric. <laughs> so that was the end of that idea. So I just made the, this version, but with just a plain neck like this one. And my item is this one. This is what I came up with. I'll make sure I insert a photo of myself wearing it. Um, this is, I used a rib jersey. It's actually a brushed rib jersey from Spotlight. Um, the fabric is very stretchy. It is also, I'll just see if I can show you the inside of it. It has that brushed finish to it. It's quite beautiful. It is beautiful to wear. However, it it's very, very stretchy. And I did actually size down because it was so stretchy, but it was just really, really hard to work with. And I found it was just stretching out all over the place. Um, I did end up stabilizing the neckband. Um, it's fully stabled, stabilized. Um, I just, I was not pleased with how it sewed up. The handband is all, it's, I've actually redone this. When I first did the handband, it was really, really, um, it was just so wavy, I wouldn't have worn it. So I've redone it. It, it is better, but I'm still not 100% happy with it. And um, I have worn this, so it's a little bit, it's, yeah, I was wearing it yesterday. <laughs> so it's probably due for a wash soon. <laughs> but it's a super comfy top. It's really nice to wear. And um, if I could figure out how to work with this fabric, I would probably try it again. So um, it's, I love the colour, I just love that sort of blue muted sort of tone and um, it's the style of the shirt, like the pattern is really good. So I would like to make it again, it would be a really quick, um, a really quick shirt to make if you use a more stable fabric than what I did. So that's the Cebu top, this is the Cebu top by Itch to Stitch and I think if I'm, I would like to make it again, I would really like to make the cow version. And um, now that I have actually made this version without the cow, I wouldn't mind doing that as well. So maybe next year when I have a bit more time, um, I would make that again. But I feel like the weather's warming up a bit too much to be doing winter sewing at the moment. So something for next year. <laughs> so, so the second item I made for June, July 2023 was the Marlowe cardigan. Now this is an oversized cardigan with a drop sleeve and has the two length options and the longer option has the patch pockets. I made this version and I'll show you what I made. This is the one that I made and I love it. <laughs> this is so fun to sew. Um, this is really popular on Instagram. There's lots of people have made it. And I just really wanted to try it. I just like the sim how simple the sleeves were. Um, I think it was sort of more everyday, more versatile for my lifestyle. And I love the oversized buttons. I think this is beautiful. And the fabric I use is a very soft, um, sort of a knitted sort of fabric. Um, it's from Spotlight. Um, yeah, I really, really love this, sh this uh, cardigan. I would like to make another one. I want to make the longer version next time. And I have fabric that I can do that with. So um, hopefully I'll get time to do that in the next couple of months. So that's the Marlowe cardigan by True Bias. And um, yeah, it's a great pattern. I really like this one. I really enjoyed sewing it. Um, yes, yeah, sewing up. I don't think I made any adjustments other than size down. Um, I did look on Instagram and had a look at it to see what everyone else did when they made theirs before I made my own. And most people, or a couple of people sized down. So, and even just by looking at people, I could sort of tell how it was fitting them. So yeah, I decided to size down for myself. So that is the Marlowe Cardigan by True Bias. 
and hopefully I have photos in of myself wearing that one. <laughs> so, so the next item that I made for June, July was the All In Easy Fit shirt by Pattern Emporium. And I could talk about this one all day. <laughs> This is a great pattern. Um, I love it. Um, it has a two collar options. It has a stand collar or just a plain collar. It has, I think it was like five or six sleeve options. Um, I ended up doing the stand up collar and the proper shirt sleeves with the cuff and the buttons. Um, I made this as uh, so I could learn how to do that style of collar because I had never done that before. Uh, so yeah this was a learning like a skill building pattern and that's the whole reason I made it except for I also did need shirts <laughs> so I'll show you what I made and this is my shirt I have worn this a little bit but not to the point that I need to wash it just yet I kind of wear it throughout the day and then I'll take it off so it hasn't really been properly worn so it's, it's a little bit wrinkly I probably should have ironed it before coming here um, but I have, um, it has the, the, um, the stand up collar. Um, so that was fairly easy to do. It was a lot easier than what I expected it to be. Um, it has the buttons on the front and the buttons only go, they only start about here. And I think that eliminates, um, trying to put a button in the stand up collar, which I think would be really quite tricky. So it does make it much easier to make. Um, it has, and this is, um, the, the button band is done all in one piece where you fold it back. I really like patterns that do that. It makes it so much easier. And I had the cough, the cough. <laughs> I have the cuff with the button. Um, let's see if I can show you that a bit better. Um, it has the lovely pleats at the side as well. I did take length off the sleeves and uh, in hindsight, I probably didn't need to. I think they're a little bit short now. Uh, I do tend to just roll them roll them up and wear it as a layering piece so I have worn this a little bit um, my uh, it also has the um, box pleat at the back and it has top stitching on the yoke and yeah it's um it's a really good shirt I would make this again um, I would like to make it in something a different color this time a um, little bit bit lighter for the summer but yeah, this is, it's a really good pattern. I really recommend if you want to make a shirt and you haven't done it before, this is a great one to start with. Um, I think the only adjustments I made was to remove the length in the sleeve. And I think that was it. That's everything. Um, I did have the option, I was thinking about doing a narrow shoulder adjustment, but I decided not to. Uh, I just wanted to see how it fit. Um, my fabric is a flannel that I got, um, I got it from a thrift store and I've had it for years and years in my stash and I've always known I wanted to make a shirt with it. So I made sure that's what I did with it. Um, it's a little bit scratchy. Um, that's kind of what happens when you get things from thrift stores. You don't always really know what you're getting. Um, but it's, um, if I'm wearing, like I could wear it over this shirt easily. It's, um, it's not so scratchy that I couldn't do that. So, um, yeah, it's a really good shirt. So that is, what was that? That was like my third item, fourth item. Okay, my next item for June, July. <clears throat> so the fifth item I made for June, July is one that you might have seen in my last video, but I haven't put it up anywhere just yet. Uh, so this, the item that I made was the Bridget T by Patton Scout. And this is a picture of it here. Um, I made uh, this version with the, oh, uh, here we go, this version with the long sleeve um, and the longer length as well. Now, this tee is very fitted. Um, it has, it's double faced to do the square neckline, which is a really clever way of doing it. It makes it very, very neat. Um, sizes, I'll just double check for you. I've just found some information on the Bridget T. So the Bridget T goes from a size, uh, a bust of 31 inches to a bust. It has um, cup sizes as well. It's got uh, B, C and D cup sizes. And that goes to the largest cup size is a 58. 
So that's sizes 0 to 30. So that's a pretty good size range. Uh, so I ended up grading out. So this is the pattern here. Um, yep. Just make sure there's nothing on there that you shouldn't see. <laughs> um, so I ended up grading out to, uh, at the waist because it is a very fitted tee. Uh, it's meant to be, uh, they describe it as a summer basic with a bit of a twist on it with a uh, double faced neck collar. And I'll show you what I made. So this is the one I made and I did wear this in my last video. Now this is not finished and it's not finished for a reason. <laughs> um, this fabric that I bought, I really like this fabric. I think it's really nice and I think it suits me. I did not realize, I, I just feel like the pattern and the fabric are not a good match. And I really like the fabric and I'm trying to figure out a way to save it. Um, I don't love how this looks on me. I, I do like from maybe under my bust up, I like this first section. I don't like the waist down because it's very figure hugging. And this is a, I think this is a Lastane spandex or a, um, a rayon spandex or cotton jersey or some sort it's quite stretchy um and yeah i'm trying to figure out how to save it so i haven't hemmed it just yet and i haven't finished off the sleeves because i'm debating whether i actually want to uh shorten the sleeves i thought it the, i feel like the print um accentuates all the bits that i don't want accentuated so i just wonder if i had made this with uh maybe like a plain print like a black or something with a little bit more cotton in it it might not cling quite so much um and maybe it would fit me better so i don't really know that i want to go back and figure that out but i did have the thought of maybe i could chop it up and turn it into a dress instead and it might look a bit nicer so i thought i'd show you the the way it's constructed as well it has a facing on the inside so it's doubled and if I can turn it inside out, it gives you a better idea of how it's made. It is actually a very quick top to make. Um, it has, it doesn't have any um, bands or anything. And it's, it's just um, double faced to get the nice square neckline. It's a lot more simple than what you would think. And it was quite easy to fit this. I don't, didn't make any fit adjustments other than grading out at uh, the waist. So that is my Bridget T. Um, it is, I guess it's still a work in progress, but I did make it in July. And yeah, I'm not 100% what I want to do with it because I really do like the fabric, um, but I'm not sure that I like it on me. I'll make sure I put a picture of myself wearing it. Um, I had a hard time getting photos. <laughs> uh, I was trying to look my skinniest. <laughs> <laughs> and hide everything that I was trying to show off in the photos. So um, I hope you enjoy those. <laughs> so the last item that I made for June and July, I had originally planned at the start of the month that I was going to make a whole heap of winter things and jackets and coats and um, just really warm things. But a lot of that is uh, that I wanted to make was using quite plain sort of fabrics. And I was getting bored. So I I was watching a video, uh, a YouTuber that was new to me at the time. I think her name's Tanya. Tanya, I'll put her name on the, um, the, I'll put her YouTube channel on the screen and I'll see if I can link it down below as well. I really liked her channel. I'd, first time I'd seen it and she was wearing this beautiful top and I was wondering what on earth is that top? It's absolutely beautiful. I want to make that. So... And uh, it turns out I had the pattern and probably half of you have the pattern as well. I ended up making this one. It's the Anthea Blouse for Anna Allen. I stopped everything then and there and I went and traced out the pattern and got it all set to make. So I have made it. I'll show you what I've come up with. So um, I've made one copy of it and I wanted to trial the fix I normally have to do. Uh, broad shoulder adjustment, narrow shoulder adjustment. I wanted to see how it fit me. And uh, so I used a fabric that wouldn't be devastating if it didn't turn out right, if it didn't fit correctly. So this is what I came up with. 
This is my Anthea blouse. Um, this is one of those fabrics. This actually looks a lot better on <laughs> than it does on the hanger. <laughs> I, I find this, it just looks very, very busy. And I would like to make it in something a lot more simple than what this is. So, um, I love how it fits though. I think it looks so nice on. Um, hopefully I've got some pictures in there. I did take quite a few pictures of myself wearing this one. Um, the lighting was not great that day. It's been very bright outside, um, a little bit windy um, and very, very chilly. So um, I got the photos I could get. And I just think it's a beautiful shirt. I love that the sleeves are beautiful and puffy. Um, I actually made my sleeves. So I did end up making the sleeves smaller centimeter out of the middle of the sleeve piece to get the whole sleeve out of my the width of my fabric and it didn't really affect the sleeves too much that I can tell oh and you'll notice there are no buttons <laughs> um what I did go shopping for buttons the other day and I couldn't find anything that I liked and also I am using um, this machine behind me this is my spare sewing machine it's about 20 years old uh, my current machine is in getting serviced and I have just discovered that this will not do buttonholes <laughs> It's got something I don't know something's wrong with it. It doesn't it kind of seems to tilt the, uh, the foot when it gets to a certain point. So I don't know what I'm doing wrong I've had several goes and I didn't want to wreck it because it's it's my backup machine I don't want to break it before my other machine is ready to come home with me <laughs> So that is everything that I made for June July I hope you enjoyed seeing that today so this weekend coming this is my birthday weekend <laughs> so next week I am hoping to show you uh, if there's anything that I get for my birthday that is sewing related I will show you that I also have been um, I've bought quite a few patterns and there's some of them that I'm just hanging to make I can't wait there's some beautiful patterns coming out so I will show you everything that I purchased in the last few months and anything I haven't shown you. Um, so hang out for that one in my next my next video. And um, I also have some high, high I can't say it now. High essence. High essence. <laughs> they, they're bold flowers. They're absolutely beautiful. Um, I was walking out my garden yesterday and I noticed a lot of them are actually coming up and they look a lot fuller. So I'll, I thought I might include a little pick of those in at the end and um, so you can have a quick look at my garden. So I hope you enjoyed that today. Um, if you did like it, I would really appreciate it if you could give me a thumbs up. Um, and if you want to see more from me, um, please hit the subscribe button. And if you want to know when my uh, video is coming out next time and um, be notified of that, hit the notification bell um, and it will let you know when my next video is out. So thank you so much for joining me today. Um, I hope you enjoyed that. And I will see you next week. Thanks for watching. Bye.